Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol Baskin. I mean, it's Proto Dead, and it's time for another kitty cat long play. All right, today we're playing Dishonored. This is the seventh episode. This is a low chaos run, so basically what that means is no killing, stealth options only, trying to get the good ending or whatever ending is attributed to the low chaos, as opposed to the high chaos, which is killing everybody. Special thanks to Dominator on this one. No memes, no jokes, no additional molestation of the source footage, no bullshit. Just raw gameplay experience. This is a long play. I am Proto Dead. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. What happened last time on Proto Dead's Long Play? Corvo snuck into the Dunwall Tower to find and eliminate the Lord Regent Heron Barrows by the way of climbing up the water lock that we saw at the very beginning of the story. Once inside the heavily guarded tower, Corvo overheard the Lord Regent telling a guard that he will be sleeping in his chambers instead of the safe room. Corvo made his way down to the torturers, or, uh, I mean the royal interrogator's quarters, and waterboarded him into unconsciousness. He had another outsider shrine there, and the outsider told Corvo that he expected an entertaining spectacle of how he would handle the Lord Regent, and points out how things would be different if the Empress had been as well guarded as the Lord Regent is now. He warns that Corvo may help restore the peace, or send them all hurling into the void. Then he killed the torture. Why not? Corvo then found the broadcasting station and spoke to the propaganda officer. He is the owner of the voice the city has been hearing over the intercom, spreading the lies and propaganda for the conspiracy's regime. He tells Corvo that if he can get some incriminating recordings in the form of an audiograph from the Lord Regent's safe, then he would broadcast it to the entire city, and he would be overthrown and incarcerated. Corvo swoops into the Lord Regent's chambers and puts him to bed. With the combination from the propaganda officer, he confiscates the audiographs, and plays them in the amplifier to be broadcast to the entire city. It tells of how he orchestrated the rat plague to eradicate the poor and confessed to hiring an assassin to murder Empress Jessamine Caldwin. The Lord Regent was ruling political sabotage by his own incompetence and overconfidence, incapacitated forever without a drop of his blood spilt. Corvo rode back to the Hound's Pit with Samuel and rejoiced in celebration of saving the day. As young Emily colors in the background, Pendleton reassures that Emily will be reinstated as Empress the very next day. They'll clear Corvo's name and begin the rebuilding process. They raise a glass in Corvo's name and they all drink. But shortly after Corvo's drink, an illness swims over him and he falls to the floor. The drink was poisoned. Havelock, Martin, and Pendleton admit to using poison on Corvo, with the boatman Samuel's help. They reveal that they produce the body of Corvo, and keep the charade of Corvo being the assassin that killed the Empress. They will be regarded as heroes, and be granted legitimacy to take the power and command over the city, instead of instating Emily as was the plan. They would be the men to rescue Emily Caldwin, brought down a tyrant, and kill the Empress's assassin. After they left, Samuel confesses that he couldn't refuse them because they had him by the balls. <laughs> he didn't want to, but he had to poison Corvo. But he only gave him half of the required dose. With any luck, he would live. Samuel said that he would spirit Corvo away. Then he would have to go into hiding himself. This is the one who was with the Empress when she died. Poison. Tibian stuff. Amateur work. He'll live. That's up to Dowd.
gift from your friend. The one who talks to you in the dark. Talks to you when you visit his shrines. I visited those shrines too. And I know what it felt like to shove a blade into your empress. But I don't know you. Who you are. And who you fight for. They're a mystery. And I can't allow that. Here you are at last, in a ruined and drowning world, held captive by the man who killed your empress, the assassin Dowd. Your friends poisoned you and dumped your body in the river. Did they do it to protect themselves, so no one would ever know what they'd done? Or was it because they were a single move away from controlling an empire, and they knew you'd never let them manipulate Emily? Maybe none of these. Perhaps that's just the nature of man.
come back here. Hard to say, but we should watch the streets. Alright, if nothing else, we can cut him off at the market. We can't get through the rail station without the key. This one is reserved for
time gate bound, not the bound. refineries we started. And now we fight the duel that no two others could fight against the ticking of the clock. I've waited for this. Let's see if the outsider will save your life, or mine. Why are you fighting? You poisoned me and left you to die. Are you dead, Empress? Go on! Strike as if you mean it! I have one more surprise for you. I ask for my life. When I killed your empress and took her daughter, something broke inside me. Now I see the design on the back of your hand, the mark of the outsider himself, and I remember all I've done. The years of waiting for the right moment to step forward from an alley and drive a knife between the ribs of some noble. All the money exchanging hands, from one rich bastard or another. Killing for one of them one year, then being paid to kill him in return the next. But what have I accomplished? More than you have, or much less. I remember bending at the shrines, listening as the outsider whispered, 
that I was going to change things, that I was somehow important. It felt good. It made me believe I was powerful. Now I want nothing but to leave this city and fade from the memory of those who reside here. I've had enough killing. The men you worked for asked you to kill for them, but you found some other way. You took a path I could have followed, but did not. So my life is in your hands. Make your choice. And you choose mercy. Extraordinary. I'd expect it. Must be be in a basement. There's no hospital. I told you that. You think they round people up because there's a cure? They're city guards. They're supposed to protect people. They did. They protect the healthy people from people like us, the sick ones. I'm not uh, that bad. Some people pull through, right? <coughs> Don't they? One in a thousand. Ten thousand, probably. Any chance, I'll take. When, when I get out of there... <coughs> ...and get better, I'm going to do right this time. A fresh start. This time. I can't stand this waiting anymore. The plague...
Wish I had a last swig of whiskey. You're the mask guy's been taking down all the lords and ladies. No way through this gate unless you got the sewer key. Only one place to get that key and I wouldn't go there. Not for all the gold in Dunwall Tower. Not again. Maybe you could pull it off though. Something attacked us in the distillery. It used the rats. I know it sounds crazy. And then it run back under the streets. So we come down here to kill it. Slackjaw leading the way. Went bad. I barely crawled out. Don't know what happened to Slackjaw. He had the sewer key though. It was a fog. And then rats. Rats everywhere. Slackjaw chased him deeper into the sewers. going to boil off the nasty fat and sinew and carve a pretty song on your Hey! Someone kill this crazy witch! There's my love. Are you ready to help get Slackjaw's bones? Granny has some birthday gifts for you. I've been saving them up in case you ever came back to me. Not going to help Granny? Well, I'm disappointed. You better leave. Have a change of heart, dearie. You should leave before I get angry. Mass man, fancy you showing up down here. Look at the pickle I'm in. Word is all over the street about your little secret, Corvo. You're the one that acts the Empress. Makes sense why you run around wearing that mask. Maybe you could help me out, since we're friends and all. Oh no, I'll kill you, and cook you, and It's the cameo. The secret is in the cameo, just a piece from an old necklace, understand? Of the great Leviathan, protect me! Gnaw his flesh away.
do, dearie. <laughs> Wanna know something funny? When we were kids, we were all scared of Granny Rags. Thought she was a terrible witch. Then we grew up and figured she was just a sad old lady. We were right the first time. Now ain't that funny? I owe you. This won't even the score, but it's all I got left. Luck to you, Corvo. to such interesting places, Corvo. At the eye of the storm, raging between granny rags and this man who has lived his whole life with a cleaver in one hand and a bottle in the other, crawling out of those flooded ruins, winding your way back to the pub where you last saw Emily. Where is she now? How does it feel now, knowing your allies betrayed you? Strange how there's always a little more innocence left to lose. And Dowd, the man who killed the Empress. You had him in the palm of your hand, and you let him walk away? You fascinate me. Did they take him? Impossible! All the others down in the cellars.
Hey, this has been Proto Dead, and thank you for joining me on another video. Um, if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, and if you disliked it, hit the thumbs down button. And if there's something that you need to express that you can't do the thumbs up and the thumbs down button, leave a comment down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for future content. Uh, see you in the future.